Good morning, witches. Wow, it's May 19th, and this is Dawn from Aurora Dawn, and I have been working like a crazy person. Holy crap. So I have not had any time to do rituals or anything like that, so I'm not prepared for that, but I do have a very interesting topic I want to discuss with you because we get caught up and trapped in the, our three-dimensional world and we feel cut off, we feel powerless and all that. So I just wanted to talk about the mind and um, hermetic principle number one is everything is mental. Yeah, we're mental down here. We're all mad. <laughs> um, so the first hermetic principle is about mentalism. You have to have a thought or idea if you're going to create something. You must first think about it. And th this world that we live in is uh, made by our mind, is created by our mind. Our reality is created by our mind. And you've heard me talk over and over and over about subconscious programming, subconscious belief systems, and how that creates our reality. If you were brought up in a um, family environment where you were left alone a lot, and you might feel um, that you have to be abandoned. And therefore, when you grow up, you create these relationships where you attract people who will abandon you. And um, it's um, status quo is safe. It's the box. It's the comfort zone. This is the way it has always been. Therefore, it has to be continued that way in order to stay safe and your ego will get involved and make you think you have to be abandoned and uh, you might start compensating by saying oh I have to withdraw I prefer to not be around people I have to protect myself from people so I'm gonna withdraw in other words you're gonna cut them off at the past you're gonna withdraw yourself instead of being abandoned you're gonna confirm that you need to be without people and continue that um, and and that feeling of loneliness because people keep abandoning you abandoning you then you compensate by saying you know I really like being alone I don't want to be around other people just send me off to a cabin in the woods and I'll live there forever as a hermit but the truth is that being abandoned feeling abandoned is um, uncomfortable and it hurts so there's this conundrum, this, this, I don't know what, it's your subconscious thinking that this is the way it needs to be. And remember it's software, it has no feelings, has no way of communicating logically with you. You can't discuss anything with it. You can't, um, you know, hey, this is a better way. This is the program. This is the way we're going. That's it. So you have to actively replace that programming so that you can get out of that rut uh, and create the life that you actually want. So let's talk about mentalism as a um, practical, something practical. You, um, if you create your reality, so, uh, for instance, creating abandonment in your life, then you can do the opposite. Um, but it's important from what I've found if I have a bad habit that's not connected to an emotional trauma, it's easy to correct. But if I have a bad habit, I cannot seem to, to quit or change or a belief that keeps creating what I don't want and keeps creating uncomfortable feelings and emotions, then um, there there's an emotional trauma connected to it. And the emotions anchor it. So the deeper the trauma and the pain, the more difficult it is to change it. But there's a way to heal that and um, heal those things and change how you feel about them. Um, and I teach that in the Self Mastery for Witches, just so you know. Um, okay, so I want to talk about... There's uh, uh, some scientists who have come forward and said, hey, look, it's, there's, some, there's some very compelling evidence 
that we might be in a computer simulation. Years before, I think back in the 90s, they were the science there were scientists who were discussing the holographic universe that we might be in a hologram. There is uh, there are instruments that can measure photons and our bodies have photons coming off of them. So there's a thought that we may be made of light, which is what is required for hologram. And there's all kinds of research and stuff done. Um, but uh, recently, there was a scientist who came out, or several scientists, um, who came out with, uh, there's some compelling evidence that we are living in a computer-generated simulation. Um, and then there's... Um, I just read an article from Cosmos Magazine who says um, that's impossible. And the reason is the, is the same reason, kind of along the same lines as there's no way aliens could have ever visited this planet because they would have to travel faster than the speed of light or take thousands of years, thousands upon thousands of years to get here. Therefore, it's impossible. And I just have to laugh because they keep thinking in terms of three-dimensional reality. Just because we can't do it doesn't mean they can't do it. And if they have come here, then they've got to be thousands of years in, in advance of us and have figured some, some things out that we haven't figured out yet, okay? So yes, we have a law that says we cannot travel faster than the speed of light, but that pertains to in a three-dimensional world or fourth for the four-dimensional world because time is in the fourth dimension okay and that's Einstein I'm not pulling that out of my backside um, that is Einstein and that is the law so they say so uh, and I just have to laugh because we're confined by this three-dimensional world but that doesn't mean the aliens are um, okay so a quote from this magazine says the researchers calculated that just storing information about a couple of hundred electrons, let alone a full body, human body, would require a computer memory that would physically require more atoms than exist in the universe. And therefore, it's impossible. Of course, again, they're talking about it's not possible for us in the three-dimensional confines that, um, therefore... If it's not possible for us, it's not going to be possible for extraterrestrials. And uh, so I want to talk about a uh, holographic universe, because I know a little bit more about that than the computer simulated universe. But uh, it requires dimensions. And according to Einstein and lots of other physicists and scientists and whatnot, there are multiple dimensions. And, there, um, and higher dimensions can affect lower dimensions can manipulate and control lower dimensions, whatever is going on in the lower dimensions. So um, I read a book in college about uh, the fourth dimension and about ghosts. And it, they were talking about in the fourth dimension, um, you can interact with and have an effect on the third dimension without the third dimensional people uh, or beings be able to see that fourth dimensional person and it was talking about how this could be a way of um, explaining ghosts uh, and uh, and whatnot so time is in the fourth dimension which means when you're a ghost you can manipulate time time is wonky time is is a little squishy over there uh, and say somebody who died in the Civil War can think and believe that it's still the, the Civil War, even though lots of time has passed. And if they are um, able to communicate with somebody in today's world, they will not understand how they got to 2019 when it's still back in the Civil War. Um, that time hasn't really passed for them. Or they can advance into the future, into their future being where we are present and uh, time is different for them. They can manipulate time once they realize and figure it out. They can manipulate time. They just think about where they want to be and immediately they are there. Um, so this is why I do not believe scientists understand what's 
what's really going on here. If you use your mind, if these extraterrestrials have a way of using their mind, you learn how to do that, to manipulate time, they can get here very quickly and manifest uh, into our three-dimensional world. Okay, so holographic universe explains a lot of um, the paranormal stuff, evidently. Um, so, let's see. If you are in a hologram, most likely you will not notice it, of course. We don't notice it, except every once in a while you see like wispy things or a ghost or something moves on the table when there's nothing around to have moved it. Uh, then you start seeing evidence that <laughs> this three-dimensional world we live in is not all there is. You are, we are all multidimensional beings. There's no way that to fit all of your consciousness, all of your uh, being into this physical body uh, because there's just not enough room. The body can't handle it. And therefore, your higher self is uh, still on the other side in uh, a higher dimension. But remember what I said, the higher dimension can manipulate and control to a certain extent and um, interact with our, our three-dimensional world. Um, and so, and of course there are rules, the prime directive from Star Trek comes to mind, where they can, if they're going to be our spirit guides and our higher self is supposed to help us, they cannot interact or not interfere with our, um, the direction we want to go in. So we have like the soul contract and stuff like that. And if we here on the earth plane uh, want to go in a different direction, they have to let us because we have free will. Um, so there's a whole lot of, it, it gets kind of murky and complicated. Um, and it's not really black and white. So, but uh, I do know that angels will step in and um, other beings will step in to help us if we are in dire need. But the, I believe there are rules that govern when they can step in and when they cannot. And there are other beings, from what I understand, there are other beings that do interfere for their own nefarious reasons and they do manipulate us and control us. But we on a subconscious level in some way, somehow, somewhere, we are allowing it. That doesn't mean it's okay to be a victim. You are not a victim. It does not mean that we should go around and, and see a homeless person and go up to him and say, why are you doing this to yourself? You're responsible for this. This is your fault. No, that's no. Because if you're in the hologram, you don't know anything else that, but that this is happening to you, but you're not a victim. It's, it's, so, it's such a struggle to explain to people that um, you're in a situation where you're experiencing a painful, emotional, whatever, and um, it's your responsibility. You are allowing it to happen. But if you don't help that person understand how they are allowing it to happen and how to heal it and correct it, you're doing them a disservice by saying, why are you doing this to yourself? And telling them, you know, you can fix this. Just go and fix it. Um, that is is just not not compassionate. Uh, it it's uh, it's hurtful, and it's it's um, it's like telling a um, a quadriplegic, why are you sitting in that wheelchair? Just get up and walk. I can walk. See me? I can walk. Why can't you walk? You're dumb. If you can't just get up and walk, uh, it it just it's hurtful, and we need to be careful with that. And um, I, my focus is to empower people and teach them how they can get themselves out of their own situation that they've created for themselves uh, without uh, putting undue stress and pressure on them saying, hey, this is your fault. You did this. Okay. So we are multidimensional, which means they're part of our brain, our, not our brain, mind, is on the other side and has a great deal more power than the little brain can um, can hold. And so what happens is there are some people who evolve, who are done a lot of training, like monks, like Tibetan monks or Buddhist monks and 
um, Hindus and so on who put a lot of effort into training their mind and dealing with their emotions and their ego. And the more they grow, the more they are able to uh, gain more control over the, the life that they're living, the reality that they're living in. And they realize, hey, I can control my reality. I can change it if I don't like this. Um, okay, so there's a point I wanted to make. Uh, yes, oh yeah, um, uh, more science, I love science. This has been documented, okay? So I'm not making this up. I'm not on some sort of new age um, high thing. Uh, I want you to, to know that there are scientifically recorded studies of uh, people with multiple uh, personalities. I guess they call it, they call it something else. Uh, but multiple personalities, that's good enough. I think we all understand that. But what I found incredibly fascinating is that a woman in one personality is, has diabetes. Okay, she's ill, she's sick. Then she flips over into the other personality and has no trace of diabetes. Absolutely no trace of diabetes. So what does that tell you? Your physical ailments are created by your mind. Okay? Absolutely amazing. If you look at um, the other studies that were done on, on multiple personalities, there's a whole slew of things where the person who had no training or um, education in a culture or a language will flip into a personality that's fluent in this other language and knows the history of this other the culture and everything as if they grew up in it uh, so there's i mean there's that so they're they're tapping into something or maybe they're possessed but still the mind is creating the the diabetes that's what freaks me out okay so we're able those people are either tapping into some other reality, some other consciousness, or they're being possessed by by another being, which is, uh, I've read many, many accounts of that, how that is possible. So it could be that. But um, then um, changes in multiple personalities, just the, the ailments, the, the difficulties, then um, somebody will, the, then there's this, there are many cases where somebody who is very quiet and very self-conscious and low self-esteem will have it be in an accident where they damage part of their brain and they don't remember that um, they have an amnesia. They don't remember that history of being self-conscious, low self-esteem, and they come out of their, you know, maybe there was a coma or whatever operation or something, they come back and they, they are now flamboyant, they are boisterous, and they're charismatic, and they, um, they don't care so much about what other people think. Uh, and it's just, it's the mind creating that. It's your, based on your beliefs. So getting in and changing those beliefs allows the mind to create a different reality. So uh, that's what I'm working on. I am working on focusing on... Uh, healing my body and because I get get stuck in I'm sick I'm sick I'm sick I don't feel well this is worrying bothering me worrying so I'll, I want to um, make this better but I feel like I have to pay, pay thousands of dollars to get this fixed and I don't have the money and so I get lost in all of that and instead I want to be more focused on loving myself and making myself better and um, oh, I want to tell you about something. There's a guy on YouTube that I follow. He's called, I think it's called The Old Lab Rat or Just Old Lab Rat. I can't remember which. Uh, and he's he's Christian, but he, he's not preachy. He's a very, just very real, honest, spiritual Christian, okay? So don't get freaked out about that. But um, he uses a pendulum and he said that he's come across some orbs and he found that they respond to, bless you, bless you, bless you, yes, yes, yes. And um, he said he was working with the pendulum and with them and, and 
with the mindset of healing and they found that they do not respond to healing. Oh, we're, what's going on with this, right? And they, these seems like these orbs seem like very good things, right? So why would they not be responding to healing? Because in order to heal, you have to acknowledge that there's something wrong and they do not respond to the negative or the toxic or the what's wrong. So instead of healing, perfect health, being focused on perfect health, health, beautiful health, joyful, being joyful, uh, loving, compassion, bless, blessing, uh, and staying focused on what's perfect and what's right rather than uh, healing because healing means that you're not well and I thought that was just so fascinating and I'm trying to incorporate that kind of thinking and mindset so um, that's about all I have uh, yep yeah. okay I yeah I'm looking over my notes that's about it and I just have to laugh when scientists say well they, it, that can't be true, that can't happen because we can't do it, because it's not possible for us. That that means extraterrestrials everywhere, no matter how advanced they are or more evolved they are than us, it's impossible because we can't do it, right? They're not using rockets. <laughs> if they're thousands of years in advance of us, they are not using rockets. They are not using oil. <laughs> they are not using uh, any of that because they're so much more advanced. They're, they're incorporating different dimensions and they're folding space and time. Uh, so anyway, it's uh, that's it for me. I hope this uh, this inspires you, makes you feel good and happy and joyful. Make your reality more loving and compassionate and filling your life in, with good things for yourself. And when you build yourself up, when you do what's good for you, it is not being selfish. If you do it in expense of somebody else, that's selfish. You don't want to be selfish. Build yourself up with goodness and then you can give out of the overflow of love for yourself instead of, oh my gosh, I got to help so-and-so and you're drained already, and then you resent them for asking you, and then uh, trying to reconnect. Oh, all right, so I lost connection um, with the internet figures. So anyway, I gotta go. I love you guys, and if you like this, this video, please give it a like and comment below. All right, so I'll see you later. Have a wonderful rest of the day, and blessed be.